Hi. In this short video, we're going to talk about interval notation. This is we're going to use interval notation throughout the entire course, so it's good to get out in front of this kind of thing right now. So, what is an interval? An interval is a set of numbers such that it's all x between two endpoints and this could either be strictly greater or strictly less or it could be less than or equal to in either place okay this is a connected set intervals are connected sets and one of the most important things is that a is not equal to b a and b here are the endpoints of our interval and if we were to draw a graph of this on the real line we would have something like this this would be our point A, this would be our point B, and this set includes all the numbers in between. It may or may not include the endpoints depending on if it's great, strictly greater, strictly less, less than or equal, greater than or equal, however that goes. And that is the only issue about interval notation that we need to understand, is when do we use the square brackets versus round brackets. And that's, that's really all that we have to talk about. And that corresponds exactly, the square bracket corresponds exactly with a solid dot, which means that we include a certain endpoint. So for instance here, if we have x bigger than or equal to a, that includes a, so we put a solid dot, and in interval notation, like in a graph, we would put a solid dot, and in interval notation, we would put a square bracket, and we would write a. And then over here, if we have less than or equal to b, well, then we're also including b, so we have a, 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 a solid dot there as well. We put a comma, we put the letter b, and then we put another square bracket. And this is our interval notation for this set right here. Okay? All the x's between a and b. Okay? That's, this, that's a closed interval, the closed interval from a to b. So square brackets on both sides. Okay? And now we're going to consider... The only thing left is to consider what happens when we have less than or equal on either side, and that's when we're going to use round brackets in certain places. And also, there's one other little piece of business, and that is what happens if we have we go out to we go all the way out to infinity. And there we always use round brackets because infinity is not part of the real line. Plus or minus infinity, they're symbols that indicate that you go all the way out, but they don't actually belong, so we can't put a square bracket there. Okay? So let's, let's let's make that a little bit smaller, and let's talk about. So if we have this particular set, the set of x such that a is less than x is less than or equal to b, this is what we call a half open interval, and this would be indicated in interval notation as open brackets a close brackets B. Okay? Why close brackets? Close brackets because here we have a less than or equal to B, so we include B. Okay? That's why there's a square bracket. Here there's a strictly less than, so we have an open bracket here to indicate that we don't include A. Okay? So this is a literal translation from set notation here to interval notation here. Okay? All right, so let's consider another situation. What happens if we want to talk about this set? Let's say we want to talk about this set. Closed here at A and going all the way off to infinity. Well, that set would be written like this. A, this is a closed, closed parentheses here. because we include a we have a solid dot here okay and then going to infinity we use the infinity symbol but because infinity is not actually in the real numbers it's not an element of the real numbers we put around an open bracket but this indicates that this set includes all the real numbers and in a graph we would indicate that by an arrow showing that this never ends that we just keep on going so any number bigger than A, this set, what this really says, the way to read this set, 
when you get good at it, is you think of this as this is all numbers bigger than or equal to a. Okay? This is equivalent to saying x bigger than or equal to a. Okay? Where, yeah, that's it. We don't need to say any more. Okay? And so, as a final example, let's talk about Let's talk about this set. A set of x so that 3 is less than x is less than 5. Okay, how would we write that in interval notation? Well, we would write that as open brackets 3, comma, open brackets 5. Okay, this is all real numbers between 3 and 5, but not including, we do not include 3 or 5. And that's why we have round brackets here at both ends. And if we were to draw a graph of that, we would draw the graph like this. Open circle, open circle. This would be 3, this would be 5, and our set would include everything in between. Okay? So there you have it. That's a short introduction to interval notation. Um, the other thing that, would, that you have to bear in mind is... Uh, unions and intersections. Um, so this was a problem that came up recently in class. What happens if what we care about is we want to represent the set of real numbers um, but we, we want to throw away all real, let's say we want to say all real numbers except Five. How do we do that? How do we say that? Well, this is how you would say that. You would say minus infinity to five, open bracket. Okay, notice I'm using an open bracket here because I don't want five in my set, right? We're saying all real numbers except five. So this takes care of all the numbers that are less than five. Okay, and then we're going to add to that. So adding in set notation is a union. We add to that all the numbers that are bigger than 5, right? So that's all the numbers except 5. Are the numbers less than 5? This is x less than or equal. Sorry, that's a big mistake. We've got to fix that right now. Boop. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. We do not want to go back. Okay, okay, let's see. We're just going to scribble this out. We're going to scribble this out. This is x strictly less than 5. And this is x strictly bigger than 5. And you notice that these two sets cover everything in the real numbers except for 5. Okay? And that's how you would write that. All right. So I think that, that should cover it. Practice. Do some homework problems if you're confused or ask me in class. Thank you. Bye.